the tutorial, they did all the even numbers. So uh, you may want to communicate with your fellow classmates or use the forums which are available on the Moodle shell to communicate, all right? Um, universal, okay, this is where we are right now, okay? This is where we are. Okay. This is what we are doing. So we, we've been doing all of that. All right, nice. Okay, let's do one more problem. Um, there's some problems, as, as you can see on the board, um, there's some problems which have been done for you. So very good. Have a look at this unique one, where you've got 1111 on this edge, and 111 on this edge. What they've done is they've made a group of eight, but by wrapping it around, right? They made a group of eight. Okay? So that's one of the key criteria about Kanomaps. Okay, let me flip over to the document camera. Um, radio. So today is, can somebody give me today's date? Um, 28th, April, and what um, week six, lecture three, is it correct? All right, lecture three. Okay, let's consider this example, all right? And um, after this, you guys should start to become familiar with what we are doing. Okay, and the question says, you have F of A, B, C, D is equal to sum of min terms of 0, 2, 4, 5, 7, 9, and sum of don't cares of 1, 3, 11, 14. All right, so the way we're going to do this is it's a Kano map, it's drawn already. Okay, we want to find the minimum sum of products. Okay, that's our AB, CD. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. All right, now, let's now label our cells. 0, 0, 0, 0 is 0. 0, 0, 0, 1 is 1. 0, 0, 1, 1 is 3. 0, 0, 1, 0 is 2. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay? Now, obviously, those addresses give the places where the uh, the addresses gives the place where those those th uh, you know those things are located. All right? So. Um, So let's have an attempt at this. So let's have a look at that. Zero, right? Sum of min terms means it's going to give the one, the location of one. If you look at the example yesterday, it was giving product of next terms. So that was giving you the locations of all the zeros. Okay. Two, four, five, seven, nine. The don't cares are located at 1, 3, 11, 14. All right, now, let's now go ahead and make our groups. Now, to start off with, I think this could be one large group. We can make this into one large group, yeah? One large group is there. Nice. We can, what about these two ones? We can't make a group of six, right? But we can make a group of four. There you go, another group of four. 
What about these two ones? Do we make a group of two? No, we can make a group of four as well. Right? What about these two over here? Well, we could have made use the one, but why use the one when you can use the x to your advantage? Always use the x to expand the number of your group. Now, what about this last x? It doesn't neighbor anybody. So, because it is not, na it is not neighboring any particular one, you, we can leave it out, right? So, the, 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 the thing about this x is you might want to include it, but it doesn't neighbor. You only include the x, remember that, only include the x if it helps to make your current group larger. But remember, the group size has to be to the power of 2, right? So we use these two x's over here. Those two x's were used. We use these two x's over here in order to rope in that big 4 over there. We use these two x's again to rope that big 4. We use three x's, 1, 2, and 3, to just cater for that 1. So that 1 which was sitting alone became a group of 4, right? We could have done a group of two over here, something like this. We could have done a group of two, but why use a group of two when you can make a group of four? Right? And then this one over here, we use that. Okay, so let's now do one by one. So in the end, our f is equal to, what is this long one over here, guys? Yes, a bar, b bar. Or, let's consider this guy here, this, this one, this one over here. Okay, this four over here. What is that? That would be, so th just for those of you who are still unfamiliar, that's A bar B, A B, A B bar, C bar D bar, C bar D, C D, C D bar. Okay? All right, now. This becomes what? This guy in the middle. That will be what's common on this side. Let's look at what's common on this side. That's an A bar. And what's common on this axis? D. Let's do this one here, the top one. What's common on this way? If you look at it horizontally. A bar again. And what's common on this way? C bar. Let's look at this fellow over here which is half this way, half this way. It's wrapped around. What's common on this way? What's common for this wrap around? B bar. What's common this way? D. There we go. That's our answer. So for those of you who are not too familiar, this one here comes from that point. That guy there comes from this guy. This one here is this guy, and that guy there is that guy. All right. So now tell me, every time you have a group, you've got to remember what I've always said. Every time you are writing some mathematical equations down or whatever it is, every group represents what? in hardware. Tell me, what does every group represent? This group, let's say we did a group here, this group of four, that represents an end gate. Okay? Every time you are making a new group, that means you are adding a new end gate into your circuit. That's why, what should you do have? As few groups as possible. Make as few groups as possible. Is there anything which you could have done to reduce the number of groups there? Anything at all? No, I think that's the minimum number of groups, right? So that's why if somebody would have said, hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to also, let us say a student comes and says, I'm going to create a group like this, another group. Fine. So that will add a new term. But what is that doing in the hardware? It is adding a new end gate. So every new group is introducing an end gate. So that's what you should visualize. Every time you are writing something in equations of Boolean algebra, that's adding to your hardware. On, on this side, you are writing something, but on the right-hand side, or on the hardware implementation, you are increasing. So 
That's why we want to make as few groups as possible. Now, every time the group becomes bigger, tell me something else, another observation. Every time the group becomes bigger, what is happening to the size of the end gate? Right? So let us say, let us say, we consider this one in pencil, that guy there, right? As that is becoming bigger, I mean, that's got two, two literals in that group, right? That group has got two literals, the one right on the top over there, which I drew just for fun, all right? Now, how many, okay, every, every group represents N, N gate, yeah? Everyone is familiar with that. Now, how many inputs would there have been in that N gate? How many people say one input? That's a trick question. There's no such thing as a one input end gate. How many people say two inputs? Okay, hands right up, all right? Two inputs for this guy. This one? Okay, hands right up. Let's count. One, two, three. Okay, a few people. How many people say for this fellow here, there'll be three inputs? Yeah. So how do we know this? Because this double line, I mean, this one here will be A bar, C bar, D bar. All right? So that's three inputs. So as your group size becomes smaller, as the size of your group becomes smaller, the size of your end gate becomes larger. Right? As the size of your uh, group becomes smaller, your end gate becomes larger. As the size of your end gate become, uh, group becomes larger, your end gate becomes smaller. So all these groups with four, four literals or four terms inside it, four windows, only two input end gate is required, right? What would happen, tell me, now, I take it to another level. What would happen if there was a group of eight? Let's say there was a one over here, and then you mapped that whole thing, and you had a group of eight. What would be the equation there? So once again, my question is, assume in cell six there's a one. There's a one in cell six, and you make this large group of eight. It'll be equal to A bar, right? So no end gate required now. It's just A bar, right? So as it become larger, the more things fall off from your circuit, all right? Okay? So when you have a group of two cells, it's a three-input end gate. Group of four cells, it's a two-input end gate. Group of eight cells, no end gate. Just the input going in, okay? Right? Now tell me, trick question now. What if all the inputs, what if the whole, what if the whole Kano map was full of ones? What would F equal to? Right? If the whole thing, everything was one, 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 everything is populated, one. Right? So you make a group of, check this out, you'll make a what? Obviously, some people will make a group of 16. Right? Because it's two to the power of? to the power of 4 is 16, right? Okay. So, uh, what would that represent, guys? That whole group, one 16, a group size 16, what would that equal to? Is that equal to? In the end, your answer will be 1. F is equal to 1. All right? Okay. Okay. Let's now have a look at, so that, that was a good example. I now want to show you I now want to show you a concept of going from, new topic, from Boolean expression to KMAP to get minimum sum of products. Okay, so that topic is over. Now we want to move to this topic now. All right, let's do an example. Let us consider F of A, B, C, D is equal to A bar, B bar, and C, A bar, B, and C bar, A, B, C bar, A, B, C bar.
Okay. So that's our Carnot map. So we know, oh, sorry, guys, I think I made a mistake there. There's no D in this. A, B, C. All right, now. Okay. So um, over here, we, uh, it's somewhat like, but not exactly like, you know, when we used to um, uh, do something called Venn diagram. Do you remember this word called Venn diagram? Yeah? So, uh, you know, somebody plays soccer, somebody plays rugby, and then how many people play both? And then you have to do an intersection and that sort of thing. All right, now, we'll do something similar to that concept, but not exactly the same thing. All right, okay. So let's have a look here. Let's consider this first term. We want to implement this in the Carnot map, and then from the Carnot map, we want to extract the minimum sum of products. So let's look at this guy here. A bar, so firstly, remember what this is. This is A bar, B bar. This is A bar, B. This is A, B. This is A, B bar. This is C bar, this is C, all right? That's what those zeros and ones mean. Okay, now let's look at this first term. And it's good if you've got a pencil or two colored pencils or something like that, because remember, this course is very diagrammatic. You've got to do a lot of drawings in this course, okay? It's not technical drawing, but you've got to draw a lot of sketches to find the answers. So A bar, B bar. So let's shade this A bar, B bar on this direction, okay? Because that's going in this. So I'm shading it in one direction. Then can you see this thing says C and C? So obviously C is here. So I'm gonna shade it in this direction. So that's a double shade, yeah? That's a double shade. Can you see it's a two directional shade? So I'll put a one over there. See what I've done? Right, so I started off with, I looked at this term, I said, oh, A bar, B bar. So I shaded in one direction, and then that's C. Where was C? C is only in this direction, so that's the one. Let's look at the next term. A bar, B, a bar and B and C bar. Okay, let's look for A bar and B, this one. So let's now shade A bar and B. Okay, so we know it falls in this, and then it's and C bar, and C bar. There we go. So double shade, where is the double shade? Or where does it intersect? Remember, I'm only doing this in this particular Kano map only to teach you. After a while, you don't need your coloring pencils or crayons or whatever you use, all right? You can do it just by looking at it, okay? This is only for educational purposes only, all right? Okay, now, A, B. That's A, B, and what's C bar? C bar is here. So there we go, we put a one over there. Let's look at the last one, A, B, C. Uh, A, B, O, okay, that's whole thing again, and then C. Oh, so it's this one here. So there we go, right? This shading business is only, once again, I reiterate, it's only for the purpose of showing you what I'm trying to do. So I'm trying to find where each term is located. All right, so what can we do? Can we reduce this? Let's see. Yeah, we can reduce. That's one group. This can be another group. Anything we can do this with this guy? No, so he sits alone. Because remember, the rule is that we've got to have ones. We've got to, every one has got to be included in some group or other, okay? Every one must be covered. Okay, so now that we've covered the group, what do we call this? What do we call this? Um, so our minimum sum of products, F will equal to, what is this guy here? This, this one over here on this line. That will be B, C bar. Always go from the top and then write it down. I know some people are saying C bar, B. Yes, it's commutative, but the convention is we write it in this way. This one will be A and B, A and B. And this one, A bar, B bar, and C. There we go, guys. So what we've done is, by use of a Kano map, 
we've reduced that long Boolean expression into something much more simpler. So this is one way of doing it, right? One way of doing it. Okay, let's do another example. Okay, let's look at this one. F is equal to B C bar or A B bar or A B C bar or A B bar C D bar or A bar B bar C bar D or A B bar C D. All right, guys. Okay, question one. Find me the minimum sum of products. Okay, very simple. Let's draw it in blue. Okay. Uh, just for the sake of it, I'm going to label the cells. Okay, let's start off one by one, guys. B bar, C bar. Let's look at that. B bar, C bar. Where is B bar located? Okay, maybe we want to... For those of you who are still in unfamiliar territory, we label that as well, just to make it easy. But remember, for those of you who have become experienced, you don't need to label everything. You don't even need to label the cell numbers. Right? But I'm just doing it just as a teaching exercise for your learning purposes. All right. Okay. Now we have B bar, C bar. Let's look for where B bar is located. B bar is located in this column and is also located over here. So it's going downwards, right? Notice I'm not shading anymore. Otherwise, with that many things, you won't have any place left to shade. You might need three different crayons or something, right? So B bar is this way. And where is C bar, guys? C bar is, where is C bar located? Over here, the first two rows. So the first column and the last column signifies your B bar. And your first row in your second row signifies your uh, C bar. So we put ones over there. There we go. So ones. Right, next. Let's look at this guy. A bar, B bar. A, sorry. A, B bar. A, B bar. Let's look for A. Where is A? Okay, A is down these two. Down those two. Right, A. And what else? What else does it want, guys? It wants B bar. Oh, so it's not down those two. It's just down this one. A, B bar. There's already a column specifying that. So we go down all of that. So we know that, okay, it's down this one. Set? Everyone with me? Everyone happy? Okay. Let's move to the third one. So that one was a very simple one because, and as you go along, you tick off, all right? You tick off as you go along. The third one was A, B, C bar. Where's A, B? Oh, A, B is over here. All right, A, B is over here. And where's C bar? So A, B, we know it's going to be along this line. And where's C bar? C bar is the first two rows. So it's going to be these two, right? Yes. So it's going to be those two. Okay, A bar, B bar, C, D bar. Let's look for A bar, B bar. Oh, sorry, not A bar, B bar. That's A, B bar. A, B bar, right, down this way. And then C, D bar, down this way. Okay, it's already taken. So, yeah, okay, it's one. But luckily, it was already covered, so we've covered that as well. So, even you get a double one, that's all right. It's still occupied. Now, let's look at A, A bar, B bar. A bar, B bar is down this column. And where's C, D bar? C bar, D. C bar, D. C bar, D. It's down this way. So A bar, B bar is down this way. C bar, D is this one. Okay, so double up on that. Okay, so that's done. 
Okay, now AB bar. AB bar, AB bar. All right, AB bar is down this way. And CD is this row here. That's there. Done. Okay, so how do we handle this, guys? So that's it. We've done, we have covered all the min terms. All the min terms from our original function have been covered. Okay, so everyone is happy there. So now we do the mapping. From here, it's all similar, similar concept, right? So we do the mapping. That will be one big group here. How do we handle this too? Can we do a group of two or can we make something larger? We can make something larger. We can do a wrap around. All right? Do a wrap around like that. Then, what about these four ones? We can make this. So in the end, we can say f is equal to, this one here is a b bar, or this is c bar, oh, sorry, this is this one. What about this one? There will be b bar c bar, is that correct? b bar c bar. And this one here will be, what, what is common there? That's A, C bar. If you look at this one over here, that's A is common on this axis, and C bar is common on that axis. So that's our final answer. So that's our minimum sum of products. That's our minimum sum of products. Now, what if question two said, find the sum of min term expressions. The sum of min term expressions. So what do we do there, guys? Well, we want to find the sum of min term expressions. The question says, get me the sum of min term expressions. Right? So what we do is, we just say f of a B, C, D is equals to, we know that much. And then where do we find the addresses from? The addresses can be found on the Carnot map cell numbers. The addresses can be found on the Carnot map cell numbers. They have 0, 1, the cell addresses. 0, 1, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Let us consider question three. It says, find me the product of max term expressions. Well, you don't really need to look at the Carnot map. If you have got this, obviously, can somebody tell me the relationship between the sum of min term expressions and the product of max term expressions. Opposites, right? So the addresses which show over there will not show in this one. So we say the product of max term expression is what numbers don't show here? Or basically the numbers which are empty over here or have zeros. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen is there. Fourteen. 15, game over, all right? Okay, right. So that's, that's some related things of what you can get over here, all right? You can, you may be asked to find the sum of midterm expression. Then from here, Somebody may say, can you get me the unsimplified sum of min term expressions? Or unsimplified sum of product expressions. So you have to, again, populate the truth table and then go that way. So from here, somebody says, get me the truth table. So from here, you can go to the truth table. So the truth table, so it's all connected. It's just like, it's just like um, uh, uh, some towns, like Suva, Lotro, uh, uh, maybe. Nendi, Latoka, Ba, and maybe there's another town over there in the middle, and then they're all connected to each other, right? So it's a big web of, of things. All right, now before we move on, so that's, that's it for that particular topic. I just want to show you some more complicated uh, uh, graphs.
Uh, guys, in your free time, in your free time, I would like you, for the purpose of mid by the way, guys, your midterm examination is next week, Thursday, in this lecture room, in this time. It'll be one hour, right? It'll be a one hour short test, right? So please be here on time. Please be seated. Don't, uh, you know, don't try and sit beside each other. Try and leave one space gap. We're expecting about 60 students, so this lecture room should be full, all right? Uh, bring your pen and pencil, uh, crayons, or whatever you have, okay? All right. Okay, now, for your revision, I want you to have a look at this question, question five. So you should now, if I give you question five as a short test today, you should be able to do it. Okay? You should be able to do it. That is the nature of the problem which you will be seeing in, in your short test. Okay? So it all starts off with the truth table, and it's, it's all online, guys. You don't need to. It's, that, this test paper is online. Okay? All right? it's, it's on the Muru shell in the week six or seven one. Okay, this, so um, you should be ready. I'm not saying that this question will come. It may be something different. Okay, now, um, let's have a look at one more. Guys, I want to cover for you, before we leave this afternoon in the next uh, 15 minutes, I want to mention to you another kind of map called the five-variable kind of map. And similarly, and similarly, there is something known as the six variable Carnot map. Okay? All right? So, there is a five variable Carnot map. We don't usually give this in a test because it takes too long, but you will get it in your project. Right? You will have to you not get it. You will, your project may be something which is application based, which is like a pin number detector or something like that, right? Like a, ATM pin number detector or something, security number, right? Um, you'll have to apply some kind of maps. So right now we've done three variables. What does three variable mean? There's three inputs. We've done four variable, which means there's four inputs. This is a five variable kind of map. Now, obviously, what is the number of cells? Remember I mentioned this early on. The number of cells is equal to two to the power of number of inputs. So if it was three variable kind of map, the number of cells is 2 to the power of 3, so you get 8 cells, right? 4 variable, 2 to the power of 4, 16 cells. 5 variable, 2 to the power of 5, 32 cells. How do we arrange 32 cells? So you stack it. This is the word, stack. You stack your kind of map. So you make a 4 by 4, and you stack another 4 by 4 on top of it, right? You make one 4 by 4, and you put the other 4 by 4 right on top of that, okay? Now, um, and obviously, if you look at it, that's B, C, D, E, and A is equal to zero for the upper stack, upper layer, and A is equal to one for the lower la layer. Now, let's do a quick quiz uh, before we finish off today. What if, can you tell me, um, if this line here, the first row, zero, Four, these are cell numbers. These are all the cell numbers, cell addresses. Yeah, what we call the cell addresses. How do you figure out the cell addresses, guys? How do you figure out the cell addresses? Well, the cell addresses, you figure out by natural binary. Zero. Okay, let's try this one. Let's try this one. This cell. Twelve, all right? Zero, one, one, zero, zero. Even though it's five bits, that gives you the number 12, right? Okay, now, let's try, let's try on the lower side. Let's try on the lower side. Let's try this cell over here. One, what is this? This two will be zero, zero. What will be this side? Zero, zero. One followed by four zeros is the number 16, right? So it's the same concept, except for you just added a layer. Right, now, quiz, quick quiz. What if... 0, 4, 12, and 8 were all 1. What would be your function f equal to? 0, 4, 12, and 8. Anyone? Yeah? OK.
Okay, our friend, what are you saying? Yeah. Firstly, the first thing somebody would notice, they would do a group around this. Check. They'll do a group, right? Then they'll say, okay, that's D bar, E bar. But what are they missing? This layer is, <coughs> this layer is the A bar layer. Okay, that layer is sitting on A bar. So you get A bar, D bar, E bar. All right, let, let me take it to another level. What if I cover this guy? 17, 21, 29, 25. By now, you should have so much experience. 17, 21, 29, 25. 17, 21, 29, 25. Okay, somebody from this side. A. D by E. Yes, A, D by E. All right? And if you don't, you can jot it down. All right, now, let's take it to the next level. This is where it becomes... Interesting. Up till now, it was all straightforward. Now, because it is layers, you can loop in this direction as well. You can loop in the third dimension. But you can group in the third di dimension. <coughs> 1, 5, 13, 9, 17, 21, 29, 25. Okay? I repeat. The second row, so this row from this layer, and the second row from the top layer. Both rows, uh, both layers, second row. Both layers, but the second row. So this fellow here, and this guy here. Oh. Discuss, discuss amongst your friends. How many say that your final answer will have A bar? How many say your final answer will have an A? How many of you say there's no A or A bar? What's your final answer then? D bar E. All right, okay. Now, try this one. 27, 26, 11, 10. 27, 26, 11, 10. Twenty-seven, twenty-six, eleven, ten. Yeah, eleven, ten, twenty, ten, eleven, twenty-seven, twenty-six. Eleven twenty six. Uh, sorry, uh, ten eleven, twenty six twenty seven. Ten eleven twenty six twenty seven. How many of you have an answer? Anyone? What do you guys got? Okay. So because it is tying in both layers, A gets eliminated. There's no A, right? Just like what I showed you in the last one, right? Then you figure out what the address of these guys are. So that's look at it from this way you can one way to do it is you write down what this is zero 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 one one zero one or you can write b bar c bar b bar c b c b c bar right okay all right okay now um your answer would be it looks like it's going to be a B, C bar, D. Right? Okay? All right, let's do one last problem before we, we, we move towards finishing off, before we wrap up. Okay, let's do um, 3, 7, 2, 6, 19, 23, 18, 22. Right? Write it down, or maybe if you remember it. 3, 7, 2, 6, 19, 23, 18, 22.
What did I say? What was the question? Um, 3726. Okay, yeah, all right. So that would be. Um, Okay, how many of you got an A or A bar in your equation? Anybody with A or A bar? Anybody got a B or a B bar? C or C bar? D or D bar? No? Okay, what, do you, what did you guys get? What did you guys get? Yeah, that looks like a B bar D. Right, that's a B bar D. So I'm very happy that you don't have to actually draw the group now, you can visualize. You should be able to look at the thing and visualize, right? Now, just to take it one level up, okay, so over here they've done, they've tried to attempt to solve one problem, right? But I've solved it for you guys on the board. Uh, okay. Yeah, so this is four layers. This is four layers, right? This, this is three dimensional. So you think of this like a, almost like a rubrics cube. You know what a rubrics cube is? But rubrics cube, I think, has only got three blocks. Yeah, yeah, all right? So over here, it's four, four levels. All right, so four by four rubrics cube. cube. Okay? All right? So, uh, yeah. We won't, uh, the good news is, I will not be giving you a four by four, uh, four variable, I mean, a six variable. They call this a six variable kind of map. I don't know, uh, there's a mistake there. Right? But it is... It is organized as four by four, six of four layers of four by fours, right? Okay. Okay. Now, um, um, yes. But in your project, we will later on in the second half of the semester. In the second half of the semester, we will be doing a heavy-duty project, and you will use Kano maps, right? You may be able to find some MATLAB code or some other, some other Python codes which solve them for you. But uh, in the end, uh, sometimes they, they make some assumptions and, and you may get a different answer. Anyway, guys, uh, that's, it for, that's it for today, okay? Uh, we'll see you guys uh, in the lab tomorrow. Remember, it's 9 till 12, then 12 till 3. Your labs from last week are due tonight, uh, upload, and short test next week, Thursday. All right, thank you. Guys, everything which is covered up till uh, next week, Tuesday, including next week, Tuesday, will be covered in the final exam, right?
this side. It's, it's somebody just from there, j just off this one. I think it's too bright. I, I think it's there. Yeah. So, Leo Mandeidake. Uh, just no, this one, just this one. Yeah, that will do. Thank you. It is hitting the eyes. Thank you, my dear.